It looks like Ghoul in Omaha. Oh, it came back. Yeah, am I on? You're on. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. How are you? I'm all right. Um, I don't know what information it says about me right there for you, but um, I'm calling as an atheist. I don't necessarily have anything to challenge you guys with, but I would, I'm calling to get a better understanding of one of Matt's positions. Okay. Uh, specifically, when you get Christians that call in and they'll tell you X or Y is immoral, and then you ask why, and they say, because the Bible says so, and then uh, one of the arguments you might use is uh, you'll point out some strange Old Testament law, like stoning to death a disobedient child or something, and ask if that's morally correct, and then uh, they face some cognitive dissonance because their communities don't really address those old laws and morals. Yeah, they've had, then, to, they've had to come up with lame rationalizations <laughs> to simultaneously yeah. claim that their book is giving good moral advice when they know better. Yeah. Um, and then it's typically followed by an explanation of why uh, you would say that, uh, you, that you personally and the, both you personally and the Christian calling are both morally superior to the character that is God. Yes, and they, they and already know this, which is why they're doing the rationalization. That's why they're in that state of cognitive dissonance. I was, I was wanting to get a better understanding of that, about how you really define morality. I heard you on another, uh, on another show say that uh, uh, you get your morals from a rational consideration of the consequences of your actions, is I think what you yes. said. And... If that's the case, I'm wondering, uh, in a a hypothetical where someone uh, murders in secret or steals in secret and there is no consequences that he had premeditated and therefore went through with the action, I'm wondering if that would be an immoral action. Well, there were consequences. Somebody's dead. Right, but is it, it, would you say that that's a demonstrably negative consequence because it, um, um, because it decreases the standard of living? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if more, I, I've said before, if morality is about anything, it's about well-being. Um, and so in this case, you know, where somebody murdered someone in secret, um, the person that they've murdered, mm-hmm. uh, their, their well-being doesn't exist anymore. It was taken away and completely destroyed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so part of this is about, you know, what kind of society uh, actually uh, benefits us. So that my, my foundation for m- making moral pronouncements or moral, reaching moral conclusions is rooted entirely in reality because the mm. physical reality we inhabit dictates facts about what is in our best interest and what's not in our best interest. And it, it is also this physical reality that dictates the consequences of our actions. And so when you compare the consequences of actions with uh, you know, how, whether or not they improve or uh, diminish well-being, that's where you get in the conflict. And the, and the ones that diminish, we tend to label as immoral, and the ones that improve, we label as moral. So in, in, the, in the hypothetical where the Christian God character is real, then uh, if we're measuring a, a, a standard of living by an option of salvation or an option of damnation, wouldn't the option at that point be salvation in this hypothetical. Well, how, how do you even compute that stuff? What's, what's, the, what's the value of salvation? Is it an infinite thing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't... Uh, I mean, first of all... I guess that's it's the... First of all, decision theory breaks down when you start plugging in infinites. But um, to me, this idea that... Uh, th- this sounds very much like an ends justify the means thing. It, it's quite often, you know, this idea that well, you can't judge God because he knows better than us. Um, and he knows that this is actually in our best interest long term when it comes to salvation or damnation. Prove it. Um, and yeah, then the response <laughs> is prove it. Because first of all, if God made us and he made us incapable of understanding his motivations, uh, then that's God's problem, not ours. And second of all, if he did make us and we are capable of understanding them, then clearly we're in conflict because the biblical representation of God encourages all sorts of immoral actions, including, you know, stoning kids and um, forcing women to marry the, the rapist and slavery. And we know these things are not in our best interest. And so then the lame rationalization, 
as Don has pointed out, is that, oh, it's not in your best interest in this life, but there's another life, and this is somehow in the best interest of this other life. Now, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. If there was an afterlife in which uh, the only way to get to this afterlife was for God to endorse slavery and force people to marry their rapists, um, then he's created a flawed system and is rather an idiot. Um, mm. But but this lame rationalization that we need to be concerned about another life is one, as Don said very succinctly, prove it. Uh, because I'm concerned with this life, the one and only life that I know we're going to get, and uh, not with any other until there's someone who can give me a reason to consider some other life. Mm. And I would, I would be in agreement, so I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically and logically speaking, if you know, I don't believe by any means that the, that the character is real. I'm just saying uh, if the character was real yep. and, if we, and if we are measuring uh, morality by um, standard of livings or you know, what, what increases well-being and decreases well-being and we're faced between um, a salvation and damnation. Then you would pull an Andrea Yates and kill your kids before they could possibly sin and risk hell, thereby guaranteeing that they're going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yet another example of why these doctrines are immoral, because until somebody demonstrates that they're true, they can, those sorts of actions could not possibly be considered moral. And even if someone demonstrates that the afterlife stuff is true, which I think is one of the most dead concepts within Christianity and any other religion based on what we know about the brain versus the claims about the soul, but even if it were true, that still doesn't mean that it's moral to do this. Um, you'd have to, you, you would have to then begin making moral assessments based on an entirely new foundation. Um, and so until somebody demonstrates that there's a reason to do that, I don't see why we should. Right. All right. Well, I think that answer will suffice. Cool. Thanks for calling. Thanks for having me. Sure. All right.